uh, I think related to TI speak. Yeah, well, the programmers wrote this. But uh, you need things other than where the concept dictionary, and we're putting the, uh, we're doing this book chapter, the concept dictionary is going towards the end. Uh, now, looking at it from a researcher, and how much time, more time do I have, John? Okay, I'll just talk about my own uh, things that have concerned me over the last uh, several years. We know this is really important, and I've been particularly interested in the ability to connect each person to past and present family members because family characteristics are so important for um, the child development work. And we do have friends who are sociologists and economists and so forth, and a lot of the common measures in the literature we don't automatically get in our, uh, in our data sets. We don't have individual income. We have very small area income, about 400 people we can go down to in, uh, in many cases. Uh, so it's sort of, you know, you do a, a block or so, and, and uh, that's our six-digit postal code in Canada. But we do get people who say you can't use it because it's ecological data and it's not individual data. Uh, uh, there are some ways to get around this. We had a, a pharmaceutical program where they do get household income uh, for a subsample uh, of the population. So we try to work around this one. The same that we've had problems with education for a while. We were working without good uh, school leaving data and having to use uh, marks data to approximate school leaving. We don't have um, university attendance data. For a subsample, we have record linkage to uh, some Statistics Canada files, which under restricted conditions, we can look at that for a subfile. So the word always trying to um, get around uh, some of the um, criticisms, particularly of the academic work, which apply. Uh, journals come up with. Time-limited variables. I'm sure some of you have not come up with, oh, if we only have the data going back five more years, think of all the great stuff we could do now. So we have to accept, we, we have to build our research designs around the fact that certain data sets start at certain years. We can look forward to it, but you know there are issues. Changes affecting data quality, I'm talking about and restrictions to primary data collection. Uh, this is something that <clears throat> the province can do primary data collection, but investigators who come up with ideas as I did for a twin registry, well, we, we can identify twins, but there's a huge body of, of interesting literature that says uh, for starters, and I was saying, just give me starters. We want to identify uh, identical and non-identical twins. And basically, the province wouldn't, well, they wouldn't play ball with me on this. So I put it on the back burner to, uh, you know, you never forget about these things. They, the term, by the way, which uh, I don't do it very well, but I did coin it, is smiling persistence. And the record for smiling persistence is 25 years to get the cancer data, the cancer people. But uh, Norlu had five years, for what is four years and 364 days to get the education data uh, before the deputy minister left. So smiling persistence, it's a really good quality and pay those people well. There's an oversupply of academics who get snarky when deprived, and you don't need them. You need the smiling persistence people. Uh, okay, I've talked about the uh, well, supplementary files, subsamples, and new data. There are, you know, various ways to try to deal with this. The I, I have a, a paper that I'm working on. The family data have recently. Um, and this is actually the marital status information, the information on divorce, 
Um, there have been two things that have been coming on, and we have some cards. So there are more and more people having families, having long-term partners, and so forth, not getting married. So, uh, you know, we can't uh, do anything like that. I gave, uh, uh, I gave a talk to young people urging them to report, uh, record their personal relationships with Ontario Health, and that, that got quite a laugh out of the audience. But uh, society is changing, and also the government, in its wisdom, decided they didn't need that information as much anymore. So this is an you know, so we have two things going on which are really affecting the data quality, and it's an ongoing, an ongoing issue that I, I'm trying to, to enlist the people who are good with government to work on this. But we've used the family data in the last five years for so many things. Uh, there's a new study that wants to look at hip fracture and looking at family relations at people's grandparents. And do they have fractured hip? There's a FRAX tool, there's an international tool for hip fracture risk. So we're using family relationships there. We have a uh, Francophone community in Manitoba and a Metis community, which is, um, you know, these, these Scottish uh, factors with the Hudson Bay Company would tend to have children with. Uh, Native women, and they, in the history of Western Canada, they became an important political group. Uh, there was a Métis rebellion uh, in the late 1800s, and they're still politically active. And there, there was an interest in Métis health, so we use the family links. You know, if one member is a Métis, is identified as Métis then you can get children and parents and try to make up a group, the same way that was done with the Francophone community. Uh, and the Aboriginal health, the same thing there. So we're making the argument, you know, that 10 years from now, you'll wish you had these family data because you'll want to do a follow-up and you won't be able to have data as good quality uh, as the one you, uh, for the study. So, we're looking, and, and then networking has become very important, and dyads and triads and so forth. So uh, we're, we're working on it, I guess. And this is uh, over you. And this is my recommendation to uh, deal with some of these challenges. The multi-level modeling is of great interest uh, for us statistically because family data fit right into that. Uh, you have data at the family level and data at the individual level. And you can deal with something that statisticians and economists particularly are getting concerned with, and that is unmeasured uh, differences. Endogeneity, I think. You know, we, we use our survey data, for example, and the best of the, internet, of the surveys, the panel study in, the income in income dynamics, on many of these questions, if they uh, explain 25% of the variation in the outcome, they're very proud of themselves. Well, we can explain 25% of that variation using the variables we have. So we use that saying, you know, we have uh, mother's age at first birth, except that as an important variable. We can explain the variation, but then we can, as much as they can, then we also say, and we can compare siblings, where you have uh, subjects, individuals who are genetically similar and in similar families. And that way, we, if we get results in our sibling comparisons, it reinforces the importance of the data and the, it works with the three level. Much of our data fit into this three level kind of model. Neighborhood measures, okay, family, family measures, which are going to be identical for all families, and individual measures, which may differ, may or may not differ. And when you look at individual measures, you have those which don't vary much over time uh, sex, uh, birth order, birth weight. APGAR score, gestational age. These are going to be similar 
uh, for each individual. But then, you have all these things that you might be interested in your, in studying the importance of these variables. And you can study it, you know, within a family, the health measures particularly. The family dysfunction and the income assistance variables are very important. And, you know, we hope to continue the receiving good information on family di dysfunction. We had a multiple ministry sign off on our recent proposals using the family dysfunction indicators. So I think we had six or seven individuals who signed off giving us permission uh, to do this. And the flexibility I've mentioned is extremely important. And number two, I'm very personally interested in the life course epidemiology. And number three, the improving research design is something that our human capital economists love having the sibling data to uh, present, compare population results with sibling results, with twin results in some cases, if they're possible. Okay, and then the last slide here. I've talked about the first two. We have uh, some ideas about using the cancer data now that we have it. Uh, data for older families. We have a very active research group in psychiatry uh, looking at the effects of suicide and uh, now automobile annex, uh, accidents, the loss of a loved one on family structure and what happens uh, later. And looking at, at mental health variables. Uh, going beyond uh, just health data is a very topical thing. And then going back to Marnie's chart, the one on child development, to give some ideas of the potential. Okay, well, thank you very much.